What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Roller Coaster Tycoon. We are here on Sonata Springs, and I realized last time we forgot to check our stats on Rudimentary Ride Along, and it looks like it's a pretty good ride. Excitement of 3.33. I like it. So we can charge 3.30 for that. And it also appears we've had an incident again with our water slide here. Uh, Andante Aqueduct, for whatever reason, keeps getting stuck on this portion. I don't know what causes that. Um... I might make a modification to it just to fix that. Um, let's actually do that real quick. I think if I just adjust, uh, we'll have to do it starting from here. If I make this go down one more, it should have a little bit more speed than it did. Um, I think this will work. Does that line up? No, that lines up. Okay, that should fix it. Um, I think we were having... I don't think we were having enough speed when we were going down this drop, and it was causing them to slow down to a crawl right here, and then they start running into each other. Uh, we'll actually have to test that again since we modified the track just to get people to go on it. And we'll get that second dinghy out, and then we will open this thing. There we go. Okay, so that should hopefully be solved. Uh, I don't know what caused that, but hopefully that remedies that issue. Um, so, last episode, I left you guys saying I was going to do something to remedy all of our our guests getting lost. Um, we have a lot of guests, or at least we did. Um, where are they? Okay, they're not as prominent. We had, I think I checked, we had like 28 people saying I'm lost, or I can't find the park exit, or I want to go home. And I'm not seeing too much of that now, so that's good. Hopefully what I did fixes that, if not already, hopefully soon. So what I did is I, I did what I've been talking about on a lot of my large parks, is making them a complete circuit. Uh, so before, uh, our park just stretched from the entrance all the way around, all the way over here, and back. Um, so it was a long way for people to go if they were all the way on this end. But now, um, I've gone ahead and added a little stretch that goes around this portion of our park. So now it is a complete loop. Uh, so matter, no matter where they are, they can get back. Um, I think that helps with our guests' not so fantastical pathfinding skills. I think it helps them get back. I've also assigned handymen to all this area and I've put a few shops and stalls. Um, I didn't add a restroom now that I'm looking at it. So we'll go ahead and add a restroom as well to this sort of I'm not intending to make this like a food court area, but that's kind of what it's turning into. So it was just a really nice flat spot to build something. So I promised you guys I was going to build uh, a wooden roller coaster this episode, and I do intend to uphold that promise. Uh, I do want to build a swinging ship really quick first, though. Uh, they're super simple to do. It's not going to take long to find a spot to do it. Uh, or at least I hope it's not going to take long to find a spot to do it. I seem to have difficulty finding places to put rides in this park, despite how big it is. Uh, we have a lot of free space that I just have difficulty utilizing. So what if we do it right here? Uh, I think that could work. And we'll do the entrance. It's not going to have much of a line at all, and I'm okay with that. Uh, can I do the exit? Actually, we'll do the entrance on the back and the exit right back out here. That will work. And then we should have a mechanic that's somewhere in this general area. There he is. I think trying to look for him is almost easier than trying to go up and find who it is. Because they do have such small areas to patrol that they could easily cover the same area. Or you could just look and find him. Uh, so we'll test swinging ship and then we'll open it. I know I don't have footpath yet or a queue, so we'll fix that. And this will just go down and connect right here. Perfect. Quick and easy. Uh, swinging ship. Um, what did I do? I did soprano slide. I was about to name this soprano swinging ship. Can't do that. Um, ooh, okay. So this isn't necessarily a musical term, but it gives the illusion of it serene sounds and you have to say it with a soothing voice serene sounds it's not at all related to a swinging ship 
but I think it works nicely. Uh, it's a, I don't know, I like that name. Uh, it will do 12, 13, 14, 15. Wow, that's, you can do a lot of swings on this thing. Oh my goodness, 25 swings. Let's do that and see how exciting that makes this ride. I don't think I've ever done that many. Uh, so yeah, we're definitely gonna wait for a full load now that we're doing that. Uh, and the colors, uh, let's try doing, oh boy. Okay, that's a little harsh. What if I do black on that? That kind of tones it down. Um, this gray. Okay, I kind of like that. It was a little bright to begin with, but now I think that is doable. I like that very much. This gray looks bad there. I think black looks better for the base. Serene Sounds is painted and open for business. And that actually upped the excitement and intensity quite a bit, I believe. Two ninety nine. Normally we charge like what a buck fifty, buck eighty for that thing. I think. Um, yeah, so that that's nice. And then the focal point of today's episode will be our wooden coaster. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Uh, since we added this portion, I realized we have a lot of park that we haven't even touched. Um, so we're going to touch on that park today, or at least that portion of our park. Um, I want to build something like this at some point, probably not in this episode, but just look how crazy that is. Uh, we need a pretty big, fairly flat chunk of land to be able to do something like this. Uh, so this park is definitely not going to be that, but every time I build a wooden ride and I see that, it just makes me want to build it like really bad. <laughs> so, okay, where can I put this and not have to demolish that many trees we'll do it right here and i want to go off the back here i'm thinking this is going to be the kind of ride where um we have a chain lift to end the ride uh, so it'll have a chain lift back into the station i think that could be cool uh, or if not cool it could be practical because <laughs> i'm all about that and that little tree right there looks like it's in our way and so, yeah, this is going to be, I don't quite know yet. I don't need to be doing a curve there. We'll do that. Okay. So, yeah, this is going to be a, what I always term a sprawling ride. I'm thinking of doing kind of like a tight section in here and then having it come out and kind of dip in through the lake since we do have those water splash pieces. Uh, yeah, water splash. So I think we'll do some of that. Uh, this isn't going to be our main drop here, obviously. Um, because one thing that wooden roller coasters need, and it's not something I do a very good job of remembering to do all the time, uh, but that is chain lifts. Um, not chain lifts. Vertical Gs. Um, or... What is it called? Airtime, I think, is what it's termed as uh, in actual life. Um, in actual life, in real life, uh, when they go down with a lot of speed and then they go over a crest with a lot of speed, to it simulates the feeling of, you know, being lifted out of your seats. Uh, and this is probably going to be too tall for supports here very soon. Jeez, that's tall. Okay, so we'll go. So I want this to be kind of massive. And I'd say that's doing the job. <laughs> okay, so if we start going real steep, that starts at 32. I don't want to go too steep, but I do at the same time. <laughs> so if we do those same heights, so from 32 to 26, they should be going over that with a lot of speed. Um, so I'm looking forward to how intense this ride ends up being. It's probably going to be very, very intense, but I kind of want it to be. Um, I like building wooden rides that feel out of control. Um, and the game also says that these rides are designed to feel out of control. So I'm going to try to do just that. It's going to be very expensive because of how high up I'm building everything here. 
but I think it's going to come out really nicely, or at least that is my hope. It could very well not do that, but I'm going to try to avoid that if I can. Okay. Uh, what's it, this tree? Yes, it is. Okay. So, yeah, I'm in a pretty good mood today. Um, I went for... We're going to run into that right, aren't we? No, we're not. Perfect. Uh, I went for a run this morning, and... Was it this morning? Yes, it was this morning. Uh, sorry, I was debating between this morning or this afternoon. It was very hot. It felt like this afternoon. Uh, it's In Texas, we had, uh, I don't know if you'd call it a cold front, but the past like week or so has felt fantastic. Um, up until about two or three days ago, the hot weather came back. It's gross. It's muggy. It's, it's Texas again. Uh, the Texas weather is back, and I hope it's not here to stay too long, because no one really likes that nasty heat. Uh, you know, you can't complain too much. We do live in Texas. It is kind of par for the course. Uh, you can't complain about the heat and live in Texas. That just doesn't work. Um, but, so yeah, it was pretty hot today on my run, and it felt good, um, I, I've told people this before, and I always get people saying they think I'm weird, but I like to sweat. Um, I like the feeling of sweating. It's a... Uh, what's the word? I don't, what am I trying to say? Um, it, it gives you a sense... It's a physical indicator of the fact that you have put in hard work. Uh, yeah, in summer in Texas, or I guess it's not summer still... Uh, but in Texas, when it's hot, that doesn't always, you don't always have to do work to sweat. It can just be really hot out. Um, I don't know if that's going to make it. I think it will. But when you know you're exercising, you're putting in hard work. Oh, this isn't going to line up where I want it to. It's going to go right over this chunk right here. And I don't think that's going to look incredibly great. But we'll try it and see. We'll see how this looks. Uh, no. I don't like that. Okay, so this will have to... Oh, boy. Okay, so we did a... We'll go one more there and then do two small ones. That should adjust where we line up. Yeah, it will. Okay. Don't know if I finished my thought on sweating, but I like to sweat. That was that. <laughs> and I definitely did that today, since it was very hot out today. Very hot indeed. Oh, can I? No, I can't. That would have been kind of cool. I kind of want to go over, touch down on the water there, go back up nice and steep. And then we're going to add some water splashes. Or at least that's the goal. And I don't want this part over the water to take up too much space. Um, I don't like marring the beauty of the water too much. Oh, and this will work out perfect to go over the island, I think. That should work just fine. Not land tool, water tool. And I want to do two, maybe three water splashes. Bush is, I can't lower the water because of a bush that's not in the water. That makes total sense. Ooh, this... I can't do this any... Okay, we're going to change this just slightly. It's not actually going to touch the water. It's going to flatten out one prior. Just so that way we can end this or start this one tile sooner. That didn't work. Oh. Okay, whatever. That'll still work. Whatever I just did didn't do anything, but <laughs> that's fine. Is it the plants or the land? It is the land. That's in my way. Okay, and let me raise the water back right there. That looks kind of odd. There we go. And I'll actually lower that corner. 
No, I won't. That'll stay right there. Okay, so we came from 16. We'll go back up to 12. And what tile are we on here? We're on this one. So that's the the third visible tile marker on this station. Okay, this is hopefully going to line up decently. I think that's lined up. I think. We'll find out here in a second. So I want to flatten out to, not seven, to eight. And then continue going a little bit more. We're going to have to drop this down, end with one more water splash, and then a chain lift all the way back up. And I think if I did this right, it should line up just right. So we need to start there, actually. And this will prevent any of our boat hire uh, bumper boats from going in this direction. So I think that will that will help. Uh, and the land's going to have to change here a little bit as well. All right, water splash. And back up. And this is going to be another one of those kind of cheating uh, chain lifts just to get it up to where we need it. Is that tree in my way? I think it is. There we go. Oh, this is kind of cool. I'm hoping this works. This could be very extreme. It could be absolutely awful. I'm not sure, but... I'm going to test it here in just one second and find out. But I think this came out really cool looking. Uh, it is a mess over here. It looks very busy, but it's really not. We could easily put another ride through this, and we might do just that uh, now that I'm looking at it. Because that is a good chunk of our park space, and we still have a year and a half left on this park. And if I want to build some big roller coasters, I kind of need to utilize... We could probably do another one in this area, and I honestly will probably do another one weaving through my wooden ride. So I think that will come out nicely once I do end up doing that, if I do end up doing that, which I think I will. I plan on it, but you know how these things go. You can never be sure, and I don't think this is going to make it all the way back down to the path. It's most certainly not. So we will do something different instead. Uh, we'll actually go back down on this side of the path. And can I clear the ride if I go this way? I think I can. Yes, I can. And let me see if that will line up. And it will. Perfect. I like doing uh, walkways that kind of bridge over other walkways. It makes, it adds a lot of, it's a layer of, decoration almost to a park like those structures those supports add something to this ride uh, and to that walkway it feels like you're actually at an amusement park where you have to go underneath part of one ride to get to another ride and etc i think it works nicely this however is going to require the demolition of some trees Several trees. But that should connect up just fine right there. And that's a that's a decent sized line. I just hope this actually performs well. <laughs> so, okay. So we said earlier on we wanted to do most of our rides as a green and a blue. Um, with this, we're probably going to do some brown because it is a wooden ride. Uh, let's do the supports in that color. Ooh, I love that. I don't know if I've done a wooden ride in this color scheme before. And I actually am going to demolish a tree or two here just to fix those supports. I thought that looked kind of wonky. Uh, but yeah, this color is... I like this color, guys. If you can't tell, if I am not being ecstatic enough about the color, I really like that. Uh, I don't know if changing the top one is going to look make it look any better or worse it's probably going to make it look worse to be honest um black kind of looks decent what if we do like a green and then the black is on the inside there 
What if we do that same green? Uh, I feel like I'm onto something. I'm not quite there yet. I think I'm there. Maybe. What if we try swapping those? Okay, I think I like that. I might tweak that later on. Honestly, this green, I think, just looks so much better. I might just do it all in that same green. Nope. There it is. I like that. That's it, guys. That looks really cool. Okay, sorry for fan fangirl fanboying i almost said fangirling fanboying over the color of a roller coaster that i built <laughs> um so we have we should have three trains if we don't we need to make it so how do i only have two? Oh, because i didn't build my station isn't as long as it can be I know it's still not maxed, but if I do seven, can I get three? No, okay. So we're doing six cars per train to give us three trains, because this is going to be a decently long ride, I think. And that cost us... I don't know what we had when we started, but I think that cost us about ten grand. Uh, that is a very expensive ride, but I think it'll be worth it. I don't think I'm going to have the luxury of being able to do that on all of my rides, uh, or at least all of my big coasters, but for this one... I think it works. I think it was worth it. Okay, so we'll definitely do full load. Um, but we'll also leave if another train arrives because we want to keep making our money. Um, we need to paint the trains themselves. Let me, let me test it so I can see what I'm doing as I paint them. Seeing them on the track helps me a lot. Uh, let me get to a view where I can actually see them. I guess this is the best view to begin with. Okay, so train one... Different colors per train. Train one will be... We'll try doing that same green. And then that brown. Uh, I think that looks good. Train two will be the opposite of that. A brown. And then a green. And then train three, I think we'll do kind of a brighter green. Uh, this green, I think. That might look bad. Might look good. Okay, I like that. Let's try that lime green. See how that looks. Okay, now that I'm seeing that, I like it, but uh, we're going to... Okay, so we're going to do the same color brown for the seats on all of these, and then train two will be that green with brown, and then train one is the lighter. So we go from light to... Not light to dark, but three different shades of green. I think that looks nice. Um, and then I had a name in mind for this when I started this episode... But I don't quite remember it. Um, tuning Fork Terror. <laughs> That's not what I had in mind when I started. But it works. It's a roller coaster. So it doesn't quite fit with our... Our pretty smooth sounding... Very easy on the ears kind of names. Uh, everything serene sounds, Andante Aqueduct, rudimentary ride along, you know, everything is kind of uh, fluffy, frilly. This is not. Uh, it is probably the most intense ride we've built in our park so far. We're probably going to build something to challenge that intensity later on. But... I think this is, deserves a name that is fitting of its intensity. And I think Tuning Fork Terror is a good one. For those that don't know, a tuning fork is a it's a metal rod with a U-shape on the end. I'll put a picture up here. Um, it's a metal rod with a U-shape on the end. And it's designed to resonate at a certain note or frequency, technically. But our ears recognize them as notes. Um... So if you strike a certain one and it happens to be an A, it will sound like an A. It's just the way that it's designed, it will resonate in a certain frequency. So you can get a lot of different tuning forks to different that are tuned to different uh, frequencies to basically make music using tuning forks. But okay, enough music theory. Let's go ahead and watch Train 1 on Tuning Fork Terror.
Okay, guys, I am so happy with how that came out. I really don't care what the uh, what our results are. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, that is the first wooden roller coaster I think I've built that feels like a proper wooden roller coaster. Yeah, it was out of control uh, when it came down this turn right here, and it was flying over these crests. But that's kind of what you want. If you've ever been on a wooden roller coaster in real life, oh my goodness, they just, they are insanely just like that. Um, our guests might disagree, however, <laughs> seeing as how we just hit an ultra extreme intensity with very low, or technically low, excitement. But I think that is awesome. No one's gonna wanna ride this, but I think it's awesome. <laughs> Uh, this is going to require a little bit of reworking here. Um, and I'm probably going to do that because we just spent 10 grand on this thing. We're not going to have an ultra extreme intensity rating. I, I can't have that. No one will ride an ultra extreme intensity rating. So um, let me go ahead and make some tweaks. And I will be back with you guys once I make those modifications. And I will show you what they were, and we will probably end with another demo of this ride. So I'll see you guys in just a sec. Okay guys, welcome back. Uh, it is two in-game in months later and I have found a fix. Uh, it took slowing it down in a lot of places. So we're gonna go ahead and watch this one last car. Um, it works. We have a high, very high, high uh, rating on this ride now, which is so much better than what we had. And I actually think it came out a little bit better. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way we changed it right there. Uh, and then we added a couple water splashes throughout the ride. We just went over one right there. And there's another one coming up. You can see it in the center of the screen right there. Uh, but that is how you can add brakes to a ride. Uh, at least on a wooden coaster. While also adding excitement. So I decided to add a few more. It slows it down quite a bit. Uh, but I think that's what this ride needed. It was just going a little too fast. Uh, in real life, I think it would have done amazing. In this game, it clearly did not. So, But unfortunately, there's no way to pause the game uh, while you edit stuff. So yeah, two months later. Uh, this came out it was so much better though. We can charge $7 for this ride. Very high intensity. It's going to do way better than I had it prior. So... Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching. This episode has gone on far too long, and I'm not exactly sure how we're going to stick to our uh, half a year per episode now that we are almost done with August and are halfway, technically, into next episode's time frame. So we'll see. We'll figure it out as we go. But thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed watching me build and correct Tuning Fork Terror. In the next episode, we'll probably build another ride. And all the time it took me to modify that, I made quite a bit of money. So now I have some cash to play around with. So until next time, guys, take care, and I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>